In this video, we're gonna build a shimmer animation for a detail screen. If we refer to the finished version of the app, here's what this thing is gonna look like. If I click on a recipe, there's that shimmer right there. I'll show you one more time because I know that was pretty quick. Click on a recipe, there's the shimmer right there. So it's not showing for very long. I only have like a one second delay there so you can kind of just see it really quickly. But you know, it's pretty much the same as the shimmer in the list animation. It's actually exactly the same other than there's a secondary line down below or there's three lines down below instead of instead of one. And of course, we'll be doing this with Jetpack Compose. We're going to be building it, you know, the same kind of ways we built the other shimmer animations. This will be quite similar to the other shimmer animation that we built, so we can actually copy a lot of the stuff from that one. So right click on components and create a new Kotlin file and call this loading recipe shimmer because this is essentially going to look like the, the recipe list shimmer, but it's just going to have a single sort of item instead of multiple items. So go into loading recipe shimmer and we can pretty much copy, you know, most of this stuff. So I'm copying all of the imports. I'm copying, you know, literally everything here. Just pressing control C on that. Now going to loading recipe shimmer and then pasting this in. By the way, if you're wondering where, if this is your first video you're watching, this video is actually part of a full course where I show you how to build a recipe app with Jetpack Compose. If you want to know what the app looks like, this is it right here. You can search for, you know, different food categories. It then loads those uh, recipes. We can click on them. It then loads like a detail screen with that recipe. So if this is your first video, there's about, you know, 35 videos before this one. So go to my channel and uh, look for that playlist. It's free. Okay. So this will be loading recipe shimmer instead of loading recipe list shimmer. Now, most of this stuff is the same. As I said, we're just going to come down to this scrollable column section and delete everything inside of it. Cause inside here is where, you know, those, those, uh, the list of, you know, shimmer animations was before. Now we just need a single one. So let's create the brush first of all. So do value brush equals brush dot linear gradients. You should be familiar with this linear gradient thing because we used it uh, previously to build the other sort of shimmer. So do colors start equals offset. You know, actually this should be, um, this should already be inside side somewhere we can copy. So if we go into the uh, shimmer recipe card item, there's our brush right there. So if I copy that brush, let's grab that and just paste that in here. Then we don't have to write this out. And instead of X shimmer, that's gonna be our X card shimmer. So just put that in here. X shimmer will become X card shimmer. The gradient we get from the translation or the card animation definition. So just copy that and paste that here. Card animation definition, grab the gradient width. Then same thing here, card animation definition, grab the gradient width. And then the Y shimmer is this Y card shimmer right here. So there's our brush, exactly the same as we have in our other shimmer animation that we built earlier in this course. Now we can also copy the starting sort of column stuff here. So grab this column, grab this first surface and grab this first spacer, copy that, go back and let's paste that in and add a space and then a closing bracket to close off this column. So what do we have here? What do we need to change? Well, card height becomes image height. That's the variable that's being passed to the function up here. That's the height of like the main sort of card when we when you click on a recipe and go to that new fragment. So this is the the biggest card shimmer. So if we go to like the finished version of the app, that's gonna be this this shimmer up here. Now we just need those three little ones. So just to show you that really quickly, we need those three little ones down there. So those are the ones that we're gonna add right now. So what I can do is copy the spacer, copy the surface. So just press, press control C on that, go to the next line. Now what I wanna do here is instead of having the image height as the preferred size, here I want to do image image height divided by 10. And that's actually it. So now I just need to copy this, you know, two more times or ho however many times you want, whatever you think you want to add to your project. So I'm going to go one more time, two more times. And then there we go. That should be our recipe, our loading recipe shimmer. So now all I got to do is I got to go into recipe fragment and go into here, scroll down to wherever we are showing that loading text. So right here, remember if we, if loading is true and recipe equals null, then we show that loading text. So here now I'm going to do recipe uh, loading shimmer or is it shimmer, shimmer loading recipe? Shimmer load or shimmer recipe loading third times the charm. Oh no, what is it? It's, yeah, it's loading loading recipe shimmer. That's what it was. I thought I typed loading first time. So loading recipe shimmer. There's the one right there. The image height here will be image underscore height. That's a constant that we've defined defined um, not in. Oh, it is up there. Okay, image height 260 or 260 DP, and uh, this needs to be dot DP. 
because that's just uh, just a value. So that should be that should be that. That'll show our shimmer. Okay, so let's run it and take a look. Okay, there's the app running. Let's click on a recipe. And boom, there we go, there's our shimmer. Now one thing I did notice there is the spacing is a little tight. So look really quick when I click, uh, the spacing's a little tight here. I'd kinda like to space those out a little bit more. So we can, we can change that. So going to loading recipe shimmer, and we can change the height of the spacer in between them if we want to. So in between each one, we can change this to 16 dp, change this one to 16 dp, and this one to 16 dp. And this one we don't even need at the bottom, that spacer is unnecessary. So let's take a look at that. Let's run it and see if that looks a little better. All right, there's the app running. Let's click on a recipe. Yes, I'd say that looks a little better. So just go back again, show that one more time. There we go, there's our nice shimmer animation. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are approaching the end of the course. I know it's been a, it's been a long haul, but I think that uh, you probably really like Jetpack Compose. I know I do. The last kind of things I wanna do here is just clean this up a little bit. I wanna abstract out some of the stuff that we're doing in each fragment, like showing the snack bar, showing the progress bar, you know, that kind of stuff. I wanna put that into the app theme because that gets inherited in every single view anyway, so it just makes more sense. Just kind of clean things up, and re reduce some uh, code duplication. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget your engagement. Go down there, say hi, tell me what you had for breakfast, tell me something, leave a like, and I will see you guys in that next video. Hey, what are you still doing here? The video's over. Well, since you're still here, I guess I'll show you the best Android courses that exist on the planet. I got all kinds of high quality courses. If you scroll on down on the homepage, there's the Jetpack Compose one that you're watching right now. There's that course, we have MVI Architecture, if you've ever been curious about that. We have my classic powerful Android apps with Jetpack Architecture. This shows you everything from, uh, well the focus on this one is pretty much database caching. caching. We get data from a real API, we cache it, we uh, basically design an app to work when there's no network connection. That is what this project is all about. We have some UI testing, another UI testing, Hilt, which uh, we actually went over in this course. We got clean architecture, this one's probably the best, this is definitely the best course on my website. If you are a professional or you are looking to get into the industry, the skills that you learn in this course are absolutely fundamental. This will give you a big edge in any job environment, whether you're applying or you're already at a job and you wanna just improve your skills. This is a really, really, really high quality course. It's hard, your, your brain might explode while watching it, but you will learn a lot. You'll learn a lot of really, really fundamental skills you know, anything from getting data from the network, caching data, designing different layers, abstracting out the different layers so that you can write unit tests, uh, espresso tests, so UI tests, dagger, navigation components, everything. It's beautiful. Definitely this is the best course on the website.